You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast IPL preview. As we have with the last few teams, we'll be profiling a team in this section. It's the last part of episode one, if you're listening on the podcast, or episode five of the YouTube series, if you're watching on YouTube. And we should obviously plug our upcoming coverage of the tournament, shouldn't we? We'll be doing multiple shows a week. The exact schedule to be worked out. So follow us on Twitter at the cricket pod if you want announcements there or just hit like and subscribe wherever you're listening or watching and our content will be pumped into your device of choice or more could you want <laughs> are you ready for are you ready for the fifth team the team to round out the first section of our prediction show fellas so ready so ready it is a huge one we basically we've 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 put the power in the hands of our Patreons. And what they've done is they've chosen an order which eliminates all three of the biggest franchises, <laughs> probably all four of the biggest franchises in the first half of the show. We've had KKR, we've had the Mumbai Indians, we had Punjab, we had CSK. Who's the last big boy? It's Royal Challengers Bangalore. Of course it predicted is. Predicted by our Patreons to finish fifth. They couldn't, have, uh, sixth, sorry. They couldn't have chosen fifth so they would start the next show with a bang. No. <laughs> They're rounding out the end of this extravaganza. Um, what's their palm door? It's not so good. They made, the three, made it to three finals. They made it to the playoffs a few times, but they have never won the competition. They are captained by Faf Duplessy. Sanjay Bangar is the coach on the bench with Mike Hessen calling the shots upstairs. They play in a nice red kit at the Chinnaswamy Stadium, the world's only all green cricket stadium. As with every team in this tournament... We've chosen a spirit animal for them based on, on their state or city. Uh, with Bangalore, Bengaluru, uh, we asked some of the guys on Patreon who were from the city what they would choose, and they went with dog. Um, okay, so... <laughs> we've been stitched up here. We've, we've had Gossok, really we've up. had Flamingo, we've had... Uh, yeah, we've had Bulls. Uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore have got the dog. But you mean uh, Bulls apparently... just Labrador? <laughs> oh, Royal Challenger. well, maybe if the guy who owns um, Royal Challenger, the whiskey brand, goes to prison for all the crimes he's done, then they'll have to change their name. And Royal Challenger's Labrador could be a uh, could be a potential name. Apparently, if you're in in Bengaluru uh, and you throw a stone, you'll hit either a software engineer or a dog. And, and I thought it would be a bit harsh to have software engineer as the, the animal. I can tell you about that actually. If you, if if you're really bored, um, so when I when I went to the auction last year, that was actually in Bangalore, and like yeah, there's like this kind of like weird. Uh, I mean, I loved it as a place. Unbelievable, unbelievable, and people are so friendly. But the roads, oh my god, I've never been so scared on the roads in <laughs> my life. And there's this, there's this kind of like a rock, scissors, paper uh, hierarchy where like uh, dog loses to bike, which loses to car, which loses to truck, and that's kind of like <laughs> no indication. There's no lanes, and it's just like a free for all. I've never been so scared of driving in my life. We've got pulling into the pulling into the airport on my back. And this dog runs out in front of the road. My my taxi driver's on WhatsApp texting, and I, I'm actually screaming at the guy to stop <laughs> because he's about to hit this dog, which actually happened to be in Labrador as well. Uh, and yeah, honestly, it was an incredible experience. And they're like, yeah, I loved it, but yeah, weird little, little story. So there we go. That's why dogs are in charge. Um, they've got some pretty good players. I don't know if you ever heard of Virat Kohli boys. Um, or Glenn Big Show Maxwell. Uh, yeah, Doesn't ring a bell. Bowlers. Hasaranga, the guy who won the cap that is for best bowler last year. I think it's purple. I always get purple, too confused. Yep. I don't really know why I get them confused. They're quite distinct colours, aren't they? Mm. But I, I do. Um, what are their strengths? Now, my 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 theory on Royal, Ch- Royal Challenges Bangalore is that they've actually got a pretty even spread of talent through their first 11 and that they've got mainly clear role definition for all of those players. So they might not always have the best seam bowler in the tournament or the best death bowler in the tournament or the best opener in the tournament, but they have got players that distinctly fit those positions. They're not shoehorning too many people into crazy situations. Not always true, but I think for the majority of the positions in the 11, uh, that is correct. I also like their bowling, Hazelwood. Um, and Siraj should be okay with the new ball. 
Um, Siraj went a bit wacko last year and Hazelwood has got some injury issues, but if that works out, that's fine. Hasaranga and Harshal in the middle overs, that's serious wicket-taking potential. Potentially a little bit weak at the death, but I will, you know, I'll, I'll be optimistic and I'll say Harshal and Hazelwood won't be the worst pair if they're throwing the ball in those last overs. Um, the weaknesses, and I think this is where we'll, I'll, I'll throw it open to, to everyone else to see how they think this might fit together. I think they, they could be a little bit one-paced at the top of the order. I'm not sure they've got anybody who says to me that they're going to go out and put their foot on the opposition's throat in the power play. I think they've got sort of strong and steady... Um, High dismissal or high balls per dismissal, but you know, potentially low strike rate players in the one, two, three position. And I, I wonder if that could cause a little bit of a log jam and put some pressure on the middle order. They've got Maxwell there. He can catch up, but you, you want to use him with a good platform, not use him to rescue an innings that you went pointlessly down a coldy sack with. So, um, Ross, I, I have, I, I'll, I'll tease the first three. From my um, my my batting order, Faf de Plessis, Virat Kohli, Rajat Patadar. I think you'd say not the worst top three we're going to see in this tournament. But am I correct in my assumption there that they might be a little bit one paced? I think so, and they do have intent on the bench. So we know how much the Emperor Dan Weston uh, likes Finn Allen um, <laughs> on it. Um, we know that Will Jacks is a quite a significant loss, right? I think from a from a someone who wasn't really on the radar a couple of years ago to now a almost like a backup player to Glenn Maxwell being quite a significant blow, I think, to their chances. Um, yeah, this year. the um, Ross, he had the highest strike rate of any player to face 150 balls in T20 cricket this year. 200, he's yeah. killing it, and and they've got um, geography teacher Bracewell as his replacement. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but I think yeah, that's that, good that, geography teacher. No, no, just from me. Literally, every time I look at him play, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm just like this guy looks like a geography teacher. He doesn't look like a professional cricketer. <laughs> um, but that, that's that's where they are. I think Virat should be opening the batting in, in this team. He should be leading from the front. Um, and yeah, with Faf again, Faf's what 38 now, 39. Um, yeah, there is a question mark around how well he's done. But you got a century for. Um, what Joburg Super Kings in the in the CA twenty. Um, so yeah, there's still some runs left in that in the beast yet. Dan, sounds like you've got a point to make. Kind of, yeah. I mean, like we, uh, I look at their batting, and I think, okay, so there's the potential for it to be really one dimensional. Um, so we talk about you know Liam Livingston at Punjab, who might not be fit. And that causes them a massive problem. Well, the same with Glenn Maxwell, the guy who's broken his leg and, and hasn't played a great deal since he since he has tried to make a comeback. So it's far from a given that we're going to see the best of Glenn Maxwell. Traditionally, the IPL uh, has been a stage where he's had pretty mixed returns. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and unless Faf contain, continues his uh, intent merchant renaissance, which he kind of showed over the winter, then... I see I see some problems for this very one dimensional top top seven really. Um and and maybe Faf was kind of forced to that because Reza Hendricks was striking at about eighty as his opening partner in South Africa. So so look, that's ultimately some some issues there. Um I don't think it's fair at all to expect Dinesh Kartik to have even half a good a season as he had last year. I mean that was just for me, I mean, complete outlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they like hitting down the order. Yeah, they have some depth, but they don't really have hitters. Shadraz Ahmed, Hasaranga can bat, but he's not really a six hitter. Harshal Patel can bat a bit too. But ultimately, like when you want when you want a guy at seven like Michael Bracewell who can just go and tee off from ball one, even if he is a, a geography teacher, um, they can't really accommodate him into that team. So that's a problem too. So they don't really have anyone else like that. Uh, and they don't really have like high end domestic batters on the bench either. Yeah, that's that's the problem, I think. They're um they're missing a batter or maybe even two. Mm-hmm. And they can't they and they arguably have them in the squad that would fix the problem. Unfortunately, they're all overseas and they can't play them. So they're in a bit of a pickle. I uh, yeah. It was weird because last year we were looking at them being like, they're basically a team that have got a really good first 11 that should do really well and not much backing up. And now I'm looking at them as a team that 
have got a little bit less than a really good first eleven and nothing to back it up. So I'm um, see. I think why well, I I'm going to be a bit more optimistic than this. I yeah. think in this year's IPL, I think the quality is a little bit lower than it, even than it was last year because there's been quite a few injuries, mm. and I think there's a few people looking ahead towards the English summer with the Nationals coming up, a World Test Championship coming up, and a few people looking ahead even further towards the World Cup. I think so. I I I think we'll see a little bit more rest on rotation. I think we might see a few people get a small injury and just go home instead of you know maybe fighting it out and getting back into the squads later and I think you can carry um, not carry but I, I I think the team that they put together it, look it would be great if they had another hitter um, but I think Maxwell and a little bit of pop from DK and a little bit of pop from Hasaranga and even a few sixes here and there from Harshal Patel is enough I think that that as a, as a middle order maybe not enough but I, I, I'm certainly not looking at that and being like, "Wow, they've got nothing there." I, I think some one of those players in every game should not should bop a few. Throw in as well that they're playing at like the a ground with 45 meter boundaries. <laughs> um, it, it 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 makes it just slightly more likely that one of them can do that. I, I actually think the bigger problem is that at the top of the order, they might not get the platform for, their, for those guys that I've just mentioned there to effectively bat without the the pressure of having to salvage an innings like none of those guys are going to salvage an innings but can they go at 10 and over at the Chinnaswamy Stadium for the last five probably between them yeah there's an issue there Jack with that logic I think is that the 45 meter boundaries that the Chinnaswamy also apply for the opposition as well oh, uh, absolutely if, but... if they've got good hitters in the opposition then they should be able to take more advantage but... of it than, than, than these RCB guys I don't think there are that many teams carrying those guys though I I I, I think this year. I, I, the 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 packs that been thinned even more than, than last year. I don't I don't think that that middle order, when you actually look at it side by side with all the others, I, I'm not going wow that's terrible. Like I'm I'm thinking yeah it's 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 probably about average. Like they they're, they're going to win some lose some with that. Um I, I I think that I I think and we talked about routes to victory and how does this team win matches. Um, I think that they will be competitive against most teams. They shouldn't like collapse too often. So they, they should put scores up. Um, I think they really need Siraj to bowl like ODI Siraj and take some wickets and not like drain Siraj in the <laughs> IPL last year. That's a they they need that to come together. But they, and they need Hayeswood to stay fit. But if that happens, decent power play pairing there. I think, and I I, I think the big route for victory for them is Harshal and Hasaranka in the middle overs, hopefully causing some problems yeah. for 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 other teams. Um. Yeah, that's and I and I I think that's I think that's a more optimistic or more repeatable way of winning cricket matches than some of the other teams that that we're talking about here. Now, I'm not saying that it won't couldn't potentially go wrong. Like it's RCB, it probably will, won't it? But um, I I I don't hate it. Ross, are you going to settle this debate? I'm in. I hate to admit it, but I'm in the Jack camp. Actually, <laughs> I, I I kind of think actually they've got. They've got some decent. Play. I think their their eleven's pretty decent. Um, I think that they, well, might, they might try things that are a little bit different and a little bit out there. Um, I think in terms of kind of how they fit their four overseas players in is quite an interesting one. I do think Reese Topley will play more than people think as well. I think he's quite an astute pickup for them, um, and maybe does offer some of that death bowling that they've got. Um, and yeah, you saw people like. Patadar, who came alive in the what was the Eliminator last year with that unbelievable century, um, I got, and yeah, I think, yeah, I'm 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 in the they're gonna make You're it. Bullish, yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm bullish on the I've I've gone full circle since we started this uh, whole podcast. Right. Um, so yeah, RCB are good, CSK CSK are good. I'm going to give you my 11 and then we're going to discuss whether we think that they have a, a realistic playoff chance. I think you, if you're listening, you could probably guess where people stand on this. But uh, my my playing 11, Faf Duplessis, Virat Kohli, Rajat Patadar, Glenn Maxwell, Mahapal Lomroor, Dinesh Kartik, Shabazz Ahmed, Hasaranga, Harshal Patel, Hazelwood, or as you say, Ross, potentially Topley there. So I've named 12. And Siraj. Um there we go. Chinnaswamy fact is a big one. Some of those guys are going around the park. I think they'll be quite a good fun team to watch. I am going to say that the Patreons are wrong. These guys are going to sneak in in fourth place. Ross. Below CSK. 
you think below CSK, Max? Yeah. Where do you think CSK were going to finish? Fifth. Okay, Ross. Um. Yeah, I reckon in the, they're in the playoff hunt, definitely. And Dan. Sorry to kind of be negative towards RCB for all the RCB listeners. Um, I think the last two years they qualified with a negative net boundary percentage, and that's like as rare as hen's teeth that that happens. So that's not a positive. I think that they're going to need Coley to go back into unbelievable Coley mode. I think Maxwell will need to have a good season. And I think that Hasaranga will need to take an absolute avalanche of wickets. Maybe Harsh or Patel needs to go back to that that season where he took the most wickets as well. Kind of levels to, to for them to be a real fighting out at the top. Um, for me, fifth bowler is a worry as well. Uh, the fifth bowler, fifth and sixth bowler. And and the fact that, they've, as I think Max said earlier, they've got all their intent merchants are like uh, overseas guys who can't get in the team. So yeah, these are these are definitely hurdles that that I, I envisage. I think their best chance is being a bowling strong team. Uh where do I see them finishing? Kind of like anywhere between fourth and seventh. Okay. So you're saying there's hope for the RCP fans. <laughs> you have a chance as a, as a... <laughs> they're, they're firmly they're firmly in the blob. The middle blob. Uh... Cool. Um, who's a guy that might do well for them this year? I actually hadn't really thought about it for RCB. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I was Shab- Shabazz Ahmed off. wasn't bad last year. There you go, Shabazz. That's what I'm saying. Shabazz. Dan, who would you say anyone anyone we should look out for from an RCB perspective? A, a bit random, but um, I I'm looking forward. To, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I've just seen his name on scorecards and stats sites and stuff. Uh, Manoj Bandage uh, from Karnataka, who He's a left-handed batter and bowls a bit of right-arm pace, but a bit of, probably more of a batting all-rounder. Uh, quite an in, could be a, their best domestic intent merchant on the bench. Right, right. We're going to wrap up part one. If you're listening on the sound, and we're going to wrap up part five. If you're watching on the sea, um, <laughs> bye. <laughs> you're listening to the Cricket Podcast.